Hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Preston here at iClass Pro, and I am going to go through a few things with you all on the webinar today regarding skill tracking and the best ways to set things up as well as navigate in the system, performing skill tracking, settings for the parent portal and things of that nature. So I just wanted to say good morning and welcome to you all. And thanks again for joining us. Before I get started, just to make for sure you are aware, we do have a Q&A section in today's webinar. I have Tori and Tabitha both that will be sitting in and helping to answer those. So feel free to chime in with any questions you have along the way. If we do not get to cover your question before the end of today's session, we will be sure to follow up with you. And you can also reach out to our support team if you have any follow-up questions by reaching out at support at iclasspro.com. So with that being said, we'll jump right into today's session and I will take you guys through some skill tracking information. So where we are going to start is we're going to look at some setup area first. So the first place that we'll want to go is to your profile icon on the top right and we'll drop it down to settings. On the far left, the first area I want to show you guys is under setup. And then out to the right, we have general settings. Now, the first thing just to have as a reference for you guys is to click here out to the right where it says skill tracking. We have this button right here. It says view an introduction to skill tracking. So if you click on this, it'll pull up a window. You'll just hit let's go. And then there's a few informational slides like how to set up certain aspects of the skill tracking system. Just keep hitting next here until you get to this final slide. In this final slide, we have the video. It's a YouTube video that's embedded here. It's approximately 15 minutes in length, but it will actually help you set up your skills from start to finish. So just as in a, a guided reference for you after today's webinar, highly recommend on taking a look at that as well. Now your only uh, setup area that we have under skill tracking is a couple preference options. One is to enable comments on evaluations visible to the customers. In essence, you can add comments to your individual evaluations in the system, and this is allowing them to see those. Otherwise, you can also attach certificates to skill progress emails. So it just sends the certificate in the form of an attachment as, um, as a different way of sending that as opposed to a separate email. Now the main area where you actually set everything up is under the set the settings menu on the left hand side you actually have skills here. This is where we'll go to look at how you build skill tracking. So the first areas that you see you have skill trees, you have skill bank, and you have skill ratings. So to first take a look at skill ratings, you can do as little or as many stars as you want to have as your rating system. Now, of course, the children or the students will see this as well as the customer, uh, depending on your preferences, of course, or even when you send those out as uh, student evaluation reports. So you actually can define what each star means, like we see here in this example. But if you want to take it down a couple notches, you can. You can update anything as needed. Next is your skill bank. So the skill bank is, of course, the skills themselves. It's just a bank that you pull from when you're attaching them to your skill tree. So when creating a new skill, you put in the name, the descriptions, notes for instructor, instructors. You can also put skills tags. And then we'll look at one that also has things maybe already listed with it, like backbend here. So we have everything set up on the back end. And then also you'll notice once you get a skill created, we have a media tab. The media tab allows for pictures and or videos to be attached. Now, if you do allow for your customers to see the skill evaluations in the parent portal, they will have access to seeing what the pictures and the videos are for each of those respective skills. 
We are YouTube and Vimeo friendly. And you can click learn how right here to get more information on how to attach the appropriate code to embed that video for the skill. And you can attach virtually as many images as you want to for different, you know, body positions uh, to get into a specific skill. Now, just a bit of advice, of course, we have many different customers who use us, uh, but specifically related to the gymnastics, tumbling, or cheerleading industry, I can tell you from my experience as a coach, what I've noticed at our facility that tends to work well is we recommend putting in something a little bit more detailed, like where we see, um, let's well, mistyped here, but um, back walkover, we'll just say, back walkover beam. And the reason why is because our skill bank is set up to be virtually um, its own skill. Now, we all know in the industry that on certain pieces of equipment, a child might have a skill, but on another piece of equipment, not so much. Well, in this example, a back walkover on the beam is very different than a back walkover on the floor, right? So because of this, we recommend creating each respective skill for its event if you plan to attach specific skills to specific events. Otherwise, what can happen is you'll create one skill for back walkover and you'll attach it to different events like beam and floor. Well, what would happen if you did this is if you checked that they got a back walkover on the floor successfully, well, when you go to look at the evaluation for the beam where that same quote unquote skill is also attached, it would automatically check that. So the system is only as smart to say that each respective skill is its own skill. The system doesn't know any better. So it's our job to tell the system that this skill is respective to this event and so on. Otherwise, attaching the same quote unquote skill among different apparatus will cause that issue. So a little bit of trial and error there, just in case you haven't ran into that already. I know we did at our facility too when we were first testing it out. But after learning, it really does make sense. The system can only pull from that specific skill that is attached system-wide. So if it is specific, just be sure to add something like this. Now, for those of you who are watching today or that will be watching this as a recording that are not in the gymnastics industry, you may not actually have events. For example, swim. In swim, you actually might just have the discipline of swimming and then levels. So in our tree, we can see a breakdown. Your discipline could be, maybe you have different types of services at your facility, like cheerleading, dance, martial arts, swimming, you name it. These are all just a few examples, okay? Now, because swimming, for example, does not necessarily have events, you may not find yourself using an attaching event. You may just have swimming as your discipline, and then you might have levels with skill sets attached to those levels. Now, gymnastics, of course, have events. And even if you use tumbling um, for events, you know, even if it's a rec tumbling, some of you, again, kind of going back to the different you know, apparatus or pieces of equipment that your student might have achieved skills on, for example, a tumble tramp versus the floor. Well, we all know a back handspring on the tumble tramp that is successful is not always successful on the floor, or it's not quite to the same level of expertise that the student has demonstrated. So because of that, even in rec systems, you know, or just tumbling programs, if you will, out there, you may want to specify what events they achieved skills on. That way you're at least giving them credit along the way. It really shows the student that, you know, their, their value of effort is happening. They're seeing progress. And the same thing, of course, guys, for the paying customer. The paying customer wants to see that their kid is at least moving forward and progressing in some way. Now, because of that, we generally recommend making sure that you are giving credit where credit's due by utilizing the system to its fullest extent. And what I mean by that is be sure to put in all of your events, even if you're a rec program, 
a regular rectangular trampoline at your facility is still a piece of equipment that they can achieve certain skills on. So even if it's conditioning, strength training, uh, sometimes I've, we've also seen, um, you know, attitude has its own discipline in certain accounts. And that's a really great way. Again, that's more of the behavioral type of discipline, but it's an area that, you know, you can make work for you. Um, needless to say, make your life a little bit better as a coach uh, if they know that they have to be rated on those areas. So just a few ideas to get your wheels churning on different things that you can put in if you haven't already or things that you can add to your account if you already do have some areas that you put in. Just wanted to give you guys some advice there. But going back to the general setup. So we'll look at mainly gymnastics. So we have different levels here and then different breakdowns for your events. Now within the different events, this is your skills. And as you can see, you can click attach skills right from here and you can do a smart search to find the skill. Otherwise, you can just scroll through all of your skills and this pulls from your skill bank. Very easy and user-friendly to do. And you can always update event names as needed. Same thing with your discipline. So when you click in this area, things will update out here to the right. And this is where you can attach and detach events as well. So very easy to build. And like I said, you have different areas like cheerleading or stunting, dance, martial arts. This is just to show you that it is very versatile in whatever respect you pretty much need it to be. You can also click out here to order it in whatever way you need to. Now, another few areas that we'll check out before looking at where we can attach this is the parent portal. In the parent portal, this also does work directly with the staff portal mobile app in the sense of customers can see it on the front end if you allow for it. Now, where these are are located under your settings menu on the far left in parent portal. From here out to the right, general settings. And it's going to be some settings down here on the bottom of these check boxes. So things like show student images. It tends to be a little bit more user friendly. That's just the headshot of, you know, what you upload to a student's profile. Otherwise, show uh, show skill evaluations in the parent portal here. Now, you can also have the option to say, I only want them to see what they've been evaluated on, not the entire skill tree. Um, and that is an option too. Now, I don't have that selected. That way we can see what it would look like from the full skill tree, so to speak, for each individual level. So these are the settings that you'll wanna double check for the front end in both the mobile app as well as the parent portal. Now what we'll do is we'll go to a class and I'll show you where and how you can attach these. Now what's important to note as to how the skills work Skill trees are attached to classes. Therefore, whoever is enrolled in the class, AKA your group of students, they automatically will have those skill sets or skill trees attached to them for being rated on based on their enrollment in that class. So what we'll take a look at here is if you want to attach skills, you can select the class whether it's one class or a group of classes, you can always use your filters over here on the left-hand side to make life easier. So if you wanna do a select all situation, you can do so. Otherwise, we'll just kinda of look at how it looks. So if I select a class or group of classes, Actually, to make it easier, I'm gonna show you in a tab here. So within the, the classes tab, so this is where you would go to skill tree. And this is where you can easily attach a discipline, a, 
and a level, you can be as specific as you want to. So maybe this class is just beginner level. So once I click beginner, it automatically will select everything. Now, if I click around, you'll notice that it does deselect. So if it's a beginner slash intermediate class, you may want to select both beginner and intermediate, for example. Now, if it's a class that you pretty much progress all the way through, you would just select the entire discipline of gymnastics. So that is how easily you can attach those respectively to the specific classes as needed. So now what we'll do is we'll look from a staff portal point of view as to how you can easily rate the students within the classes. So I'm going to log in here to the test staff portal. I'm going to click skill tracking. And I'm going to find a class to enroll. I'm sorry, in order to do skill tracking. So once I click the class, now you'll notice in this screen, it gives me a couple of options. Now I will give you my best recommendation based on a coaching standpoint and being in the middle of class and what I've found to be as more efficient overall. Technically they both work and you'll get into your rhythm or your ebb and flow of things and how you run classes, how you run rotations, how often you perform skill evaluations, et cetera. But from here, you can click the level, you can click the event, and then you can click the skill. So if I go this route, what this is telling me is this is the skill of balancing. So what you can do is you can line the kids up and you can, you can line them up in order. As you can see, they do appear in alphabetical order. So what I've done every time we perform skill evaluations is I line them up in this respective order. So I kind of get them all together and on certain skills where you know you can kind of see them all do it at the same time, you, you can say, okay, it's time to balance, everybody go. And then you just go down the line and you rate along the way. Another option is if you need to see them more so one at a time, either way, you've got them you know, lined up in order, however you need to in your facilities. And you say, okay, balance, student A, go. All right, awesome, student B etc. Okay, so once you have them all evaluated, you can click submit. Now notice I skipped a student here and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to evaluate. Again, another shortcut is up here. So if they all pretty much get the same rating, just click up here. That's what that's for. Now, your other option, okay, instead of looking at it from one specific skill okay and lining them up like that is our grid view okay the grid view is what i found uh, we didn't have this initially but we had recently come out with this uh, in mid to late last year but it's a really good way that if you're performing this on a mobile device or a tablet situation it's a little easier uh, in my personal opinion just because of the way it shows so everything is listed here and I can do it all at the same time. So I found that this tends to be a little bit faster and easier on the tablet that I use, okay? So then same situation. They're all listed in alphabetical order from left to right. And again, you just kind of call out the skill and you make it happen. Now the difference here is you can also easily add a comment on the evaluation. before clicking submit. So you can rate along the way here as well, very easily. Now it'll also show us when the student was last evaluated and what they received on that evaluation. If you look closely here, student A got one star on balancing on 413. So it will show the most recent updated evaluation, as well as like we see here with this student, they've never been evaluated. So it's really also a cool quick view 
when you're at a moment's glance checking that student out. So again, both individual skill view, going down the line and then clicking your skill to take you back and then going to the next skill, or the grid view or options in the staff portal. Now, our other options are to look at this from, actually, I'm gonna take you back to the office portal here. So where you can send out very quickly and easily student evaluations or certificates. Now, to be clear, a student that receives a certificate, this means that they have passed all skills in the skill set. And you'll have these options here by going to the skills page. Now, as you can see, we have many, many different filters. Definitely be sure to check these out. Um, a few of you know, some I'll just kind of show you here are the different ratings that you can filter for. Progression types um, are also really good to see. They pass certain levels, past events or skill evaluations, etc. Uh, and then you can say last evaluations only. So you have many different options as well as date ranges, different skill trees, however you want to or need to. What I will say is generally the idea behind this page is to be able to, in a few clicks, easily send out evaluations via email to your entire database. So what this page shows us is newly evaluated students on evaluated skills. Now, if I wanna click and see what those are, that's easy to do. And you'll notice it does send evaluation. It'll give two evaluation updates here. This shows a comment in this little message bubble here. Now you have three options up here as well. Send emails, clear selected, or download certificates. So if you want to send the emails, it sends a blank PDF attachment, whether it's a student evaluation report or if it's, if it's a certificate. Otherwise, you can click download certificates and it will download the PDF for you if you guys plan to print those out and give them physically at your location for the student. Otherwise, the beauty of that email is the customer themselves can print it out as they see fit to give to the student. So all we have to do is select all the students. Now you'll notice it doesn't give me the option to download certificates because certificates are not available. That would be if somebody passed an entire skill set. But all of these are student evaluation reports and updates on newly evaluated skills or progressions. So we can either clear or send. If we click send, we wipe our hands clean and everybody who has a new updated skill evaluation is done. So this page, whoever's responsible administratively for making sure that those are always sent out, always go to this page. Anybody who has new evaluations will show up here automatically. You simply do two clicks of selecting and sending and or selecting and downloading and you wipe your hands clean every time. Super, super simple to do. So the last piece that we'll take a look at here is in the parent portal. Now, just keep in mind in the mobile app, it's very similar. They can click on my account in the my account page or tab at the bottom of the mobile app and they'll be able to see any and all of their students' evaluations, attendance, et cetera. Okay, so we're gonna look at this from a parent portal point of view. So you'll notice we have evaluations on the left-hand side. In fact, I'm gonna refresh just so it updates for us here. So evaluations are on the left-hand side, and I have all of my specific students in my family. Okay, so they're only going to be able to see their specific children that are attached to their family and whatever skill trees and skill evaluations they have updated. So just like they can get the updates from you, they can also look at them here. So if I click into a few of these, I'll click on student A's skill tree. It's gonna show out of the possible amount of stars for gymnastics based on the classes that this student's enrolled in, that's how many they have. Now this is where it spells out for the customer what the legend is on the amount of stars and what it means based on your definitions. So we can click here 
under beginner, we can click beam. Then we see any and all evaluated skills. Notice that the ones that are not evaluated are all grayed out. I can click back to evaluations and click any and all students to see what they have so far. All right, guys, so that wraps up everything for today. Be sure to check out on our blog at www.iclasspro.com. Click the blog section on the top of the screen and you'll find our webinars area. This is where you can click to see any and all recordings of our webinar, including today's webinar, and be able to have that as a reference. And again, if you're not sure on what questions you all needed to get answered, be sure to tune in and check in with our support team and they will be happy to assist you as well. You can reach out to them at support at iclasspro.com or reach out by phone directly at 877-554-6776. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. We do have more webinars on the way. Be sure to tune in on Wednesday and we will have our next webinar regarding point of sale. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope everybody's safe out there and have a great day. Bye-bye.